Warren Hermesaitin, USN ambassador and well-known personal trainer, joins us this week to take us through the correct supplementation that we can add into our diets and also into our training so that us men can achieve those ideal weight and physical goals. Warren, welcome to Expresso. Nice Morning. to meet you. you too. Let's start off by talking about the misconceptions about muscle growth and the role of supplementation there. I think the miscon misconception lies with people thinking that they can go to the pharmacy or supplement store purchasing a product, yeah. going home, drinking it, and waiting for their muscles to grow. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not like that, otherwise everybody yeah. would achieve what they want to achieve. So you still need to go to the gym, you need to work out, mm. you need to have the proper exercise program for your body type, mm. and make sure that you're getting the nutrients in as well. Let's talk about a supplement, specifically creatine. Um, it's something that we know, we all know, we hear about it, but what exactly is it, and how does it work within the body? Okay, creatine is a based amino acid that gets produced by your body in any case. Your body produces up to two grams of it per day. Mm. And you know, a lot of mothers don't want their children to use creatine because it's not natural, you know, but you can mm. still acquire enough creatine from red meat. So you'll yeah. eat at least you know, 100, 200, 300 grams of red meat, not knowing that per 100 grams, you're getting one gram of creatine in. So mm. if you're eating a 500 gram steak, there, five, gram, five grams of creatine goes mm. into the muscles. You know, so the parents don't actually know that. Mm. Although when you're training, you deplete a lot of those creatine stores to the, to the point where your body doesn't have enough creatine to, you know, power you through the, the, the next yeah. few workouts that you're going to be having. You know, so that's why taking the extra additional creatine is quite good for when you are training and you want to be above optimal performance. Now I would like to ask, who, who would you suggest taking creatine? I mean, let's start with the younger people, let's say between 16 and 18. Can they take creatine? Um, it's always suggested that, that kids under the age of 18 don't actually use creatine. You know? So that's where I would really rely more on nutrition to be able to get those adequate amounts of creatine in. For other people that want to gain that aren't you know, under the age of 18, I'd go definitely for, for strength strength athletes, power athletes, so if you're trying to gain a little bit of muscle tissue, you want to actually get that creatine in. Mm. Um, a lot of rugby players and power sports athletes as well, mm. creatine is going to be a must. It produces more ATP in your muscles for when you're training. Mm. It also buffers lactic acid production when you're training. And also make sure you retain a little bit of water, you know, so you're a little bit heavier, you can train a lot longer. When you're training, you produce a lot of energy, mm. you know, so if a water is saturated with water, it, it heats up, but it kind of doesn't get too hot for you to get okay. fatigued too soon, you know, so that's where creatine also comes in. And, and plays a very nice part in that. All right, you mentioned ATP, exactly what is that? Just run through ATP that. is an energy system that your body uses to actually function and where the mitochondria mm. is able to produce energy mm. for you to function. Um, so a lot of the times we are people that are sugar burners, so we require mm. glucose, you know, glycogen and carbs for to produce ATP. Mm. And there's a whole system of ATP production that goes through your body. Now mm. when you have produced ATP and your body breaks down a couple of, of aspects of ATP, one of the byproducts is ADP. Okay. Now, creatine has the ability to actually bind to ADP, which is the metabolites of ATP, to produce even more ATP mm. during your workout. So you can see how fatigue will set in a lot longer, or a lot, in a, a lot longer duration of mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. when you are on creatine, where okay. if you're not, your ATP stores will be depleted quite yeah. rapidly without right. getting replenished, where the creatine okay. will prevent so that from happening. Are there so different kinds of pro, uh, creatine? Yes, definitely. In, in old school training, when creatine was used, Basically, creatine monohydrate was the only form of creatine mm. that you got. Is that the simplest form uh, of creatine? That's the simplest form of creatine. Although when it, when it binds with water, it gets converted into creatinine you know, quite rapidly. Mm. And also, back in the day, you used to drink the creatine monohydrate with apple juice. And the apple juice used to elicit an insulin response from the pancreas. So you produced a little bit of insulin, helping to drive the creatine monohydrate with, you know, it, with the apple juice into the muscle, because that mm -hmm. would give you a little bit of energy as well. Where there's an opposing creatine that's been made now as well, creatine ethyl ester, which uh, has an ester bond to the creatine, which means it gets rapidly absorbed by the muscle tissue without much of an insulin response to get it in there. Mm -hmm. You know, and creatine monohydrate as well has a higher intensity uh, um, of, of, of retaining water than what any other creatines would as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what options can we, can we look for at, at uh, USN? Look, the, the creatine ethyl ester option that we have is creatine um, X4s. 
So that is available as well. And then normal creatine monohydrate, you'll actually see on the shelf, stated mm. as creatine monohydrate. Mm. Pre-workout, I would definitely go with the creatine ethyl ester because you don't need an insulin response to absorb it. It's rapidly absorbed. Mm. It's available in the muscle tissue. You can utilize it straight away. Where as you're training, you're depleting the nutrients that you yeah. have in your body. So your body's receptiveness to wanting nutrients afterwards is a lot mm. higher. So by taking creatine monohydrate will then allow you to take up you know, a lot more of mm. that after workout or post-workout. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So you spoke about pre-workout. We're going to speak about that tomorrow. Warren, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. You too. Join us again tomorrow as we will be talking about supplements that you can add into your diet pre-training. Also remember to post your comments and questions on the USNSA Facebook page.